I hope today you are doing well. Um, it's great to see you guys. Um, the Lord has been speaking so much to me lately about um, what he he's been teaching me a lot in quarantine because all I've been able to do is um, basically spend time with him. Um, and and he's he said something really strange to me. He said, although we're slowly getting back in to quote unquote normal, he said, we have not yet learned what we need to in quarantine. He's like, we've survived it, but not thrived in it. And when he's saying we, he's meaning uh, the church as a collective body. And I said, what do you mean we're not thriving in it? People are still preaching, souls are getting saved or whatever, and whatever. I said, Lord, what do you mean? He said, unity. And I said, yeah, you pray that, you pray that we all may be one. Uh, he said, yes. And the church hasn't yet gotten there yet. And I said, how do we do this? Uh, he said, well, we need, we need to mix the old school and the new school. And I was like, I didn't know what he meant. He said, we need to get back to um, the four fundamentals of the Christian faith. And he brought me back to um, what I was talking about when I was um, doing all those private, uh, private videos for um, for Emancipation Community Fellowship Center. And he said the four pillars of the body of Christ are the word, prayer, worship, and love. So, so he said we need to get back to those four. The word, which is the Bible, or the word can be the spoken word of God, but first it has to Every spoken word from God has to come from the written word of God. Now, I'm not the best at reading the Bible. Lord knows I have a lot <laughs> to work on in that area. Um, but he said, every for everything that he speaks, um, it will first... The, the basis of it, or the seed of it, will be in his word. He said, that's the first pillow, pillar um, of the body of Christ. Prayer is the second pillar, which is basically communication with God. And prayer can come in several different forms, like... Um, prayer doesn't always have to be, oh Lord, we come to you today, and whatever. There are different types of prayer. Um, prayer is basically just communication with God. Worship is basically just telling him, him how good he is and extolling his, vir his virtues to you and uh, reflecting and telling him about his goodness and thanking him for his stuff. And basically ex ex extolling worth, his worth back to him. And love is basically 
my definition of love is to embrace um, people. Um, you don't have to understand or accept everything people do um, to love them. Um, my definition of love is to embrace and to hold people where they are. Like, you don't have to agree with everything a person does to love them. Even if you don't agree, even if you don't think it's right, love says, I embrace you anyway, although I don't fully understand. So he said, um, we need to go back to those four pillars. And he said, after we do that, uh, we need to unify the older generation and the newer generation. Um, you see, um, when I was growing up, we had um, we had tearing meeting, which which would be basically uh, we would stay at the altar and tear tarry for hours for the infilling of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. So we did all that, and I know other churches do, do did prayer shut-ins and all of that. And it's like we really wanted the presence of God. And some of what we did was misguided and and most of what we taught when I was young was misguided, but at least we we had the des the true desire for God, although we went about it in the wrong way. And now this generation, we just want quick church. We want an hour or utmost two hours, and we we want to get out of get get out of the building. But what I like about this generation is we're truthful. We're transparent. Uh, we don't hide much. He said, so if we can combine what, what was good about the older generation, the prayer, the fasting, the shut-ins, like that hunger for God with our penchant and propensity for wanting truth, we would be unstoppable. And um, it's so amazing, like he's saying partnerships, he's saying unity, um, means partnership. So he doesn't want this church over here to be alone and this church down the street from here to be alone. Find out what your community needs and do it um, for pastors and leaders. Um, because he said the body of, of Christ is global. He says there are two callings in a church. There is the global calling, the great commission to to go forth and make disciples, and there are individual callings depending on the pastor's gifting, the church and the region. He's like um he's like there are devils in every re region that I've that I've set forth a church in, and their job is to find out what devils are in that region and go after them. So let me give you an example. 
um, let's say your region is, um, there is a, a lot of pornography in your region and the, the spirit, um, in your region is a spirit of sexual perversion. As a church in that region, you're not only called to go and spread the gospel and bring light to the people, you are called in that region to, to gather the women and the men in that region and and show them the love of Christ so that so that the pornography rings don't have a hold the reason why it seems that the devil is taking so much ground in the church is because um, we, we may be fulfilling um, the global uh, vision and mission for the church, but we are ignoring our regional, our con um, country, or our, you know, our, we're ignoring those, um, callings that are specifically to our region because there's a re reason why pastors are different, why churches are different, why churches have different gifts and callings. It's because to address the specific devils in that region or, or and to um to ask the Lord what do we need to do to address those issues. So if there are shootings and a lot of uh unrest in your area, pastors get down on your knees and say, God, how do we address practically and spiritually and physically and emotionally how do we address the the devil in our region uh, not to just spread the gospel but to practically address the devil in our region and if every church would first fulfill the global vision which which would be to go and make disciples and spread um, God's love and the gospel, the fact that he died and rose again for all people, um, and he's coming back for his church. If we would go, go and spread that, and plus our regional and our national um, and our international call callings we would be doing our job as the church our job as the church is not to just come on Sunday it's to address injustice it's to it's to bring light into the darkness it's to go where people are afraid to go and bring Jesus there and it's not to just sing cute songs for uh, an hour or two and go home. It's to be a light to the world. It's to tell the world that there is a better way. And it's to address certain issues in a loving way, in a non-threatening way that are plaguing our culture. And I'm not saying that pulpits need to be turned into some political thing. They don't. That's not our job. Give to Caesar what is Caesar. Give to God what is God. Our job is not to use our pulpits as a political platform. But we need 
to use our purpose as a Jesus platform and anything that Jesus cares about, we need to care about. So our education system, our, you know, systems of injustice, our, our way we treat our seniors and our disabled, all that stuff is what Jesus cares about. See, I don't, I know that Jesus doesn't care about a, a, a new worship song. He loves that. That gives him praise and glory. But what he cares about more is are we meeting the emotional, spiritual, and physical needs of our society in our area. So if you see an issue on the news every day and your your church is not addressing it, there is a problem. If there's a shooting right by your church and you say nothing about it, there's a problem. Because those are the issues that we are supposed to address as the church. Those are the issues that we are supposed to speak on. Those are the issues that we are supposed to um, be up on. Um, I was speaking to a, a youth leader um, a while ago. And I said to him, and he was talking, I said to him, one of the struggles of uh, fostering the youth, and he says, trying to connect with them and trying to get them out, I said, D I said to him, don't worry so much about getting them out and trying to connect. We're worry more about having your Bible in one hand and a newspaper in another. Don't just use scripture to say, oh, Jesus loves you and whatever. Connect that to whatever issues are going on in your world. Do it in a loving way, do it in a caring way, do it in a compassionate way, but do it nonetheless. He's called us to be salt and light, not just worship and we have hear a pretty sermon about getting through our lives and we go home. The, the job of the church is not to get through life, it's to thr thrive in life. So a lot of churches are living, a lot of People are living ser ser from sermon to sermon, from from word to word, and they watch all these pastors on YouTube and whatever, and that's great to do that. But what are you doing with all this word that you're getting fat on? Are you sharing it with people? Are you using it to change your world? Or are you just um, using, using it to feel good? Time is over for a feel good. It's, it, it's time for a radical... The world needs a radical life change. And the only person who can really change a life is Jesus Christ. And the way he's going to do it is if the church can be an answer to the crises. So look around your church and your world. What are the crises facing your community? What are the answers that you can give? And you may not know everything, but you can partner with people who know the physical need and you can meet the spiritual need. 
And he desperately wants unity. He desperately wants partnership. He desperately wants mentorship. What do you know that can be a use to someone else? What knowledge do you have that can be a use to someone else? Because when you're a use to someone else, God will take care of you. God wants to do so much through us, but we need to understand what the global mission, the, the, nat the national mission, and our, um, our, our, our individual vision and our corporate vision. Once we understand those and have tools to act on them, we can change the world and take back devils that we, that we wouldn't, that we wouldn't have otherwise. So guys, I will see you later. Bye. Be blessed. Take care.